and continuing our sort of chat about the TT grandstand because this is such a, an emotive subject, Edmund. I mean, you know, with, with your your preserving hat on, you know, and Manx National Heritage, but we've, we've heard you know already that you're going to take a little bit of it. Yes. But is this historical? I mean, it's, I understand it's been added to and changed over the years, really. I think it is, it's important to look at the TT as a whole. Mm. Individual components of it move, move, change, ad- adapt. Uh, you know, for example, we, we don't see bikes uh, driven by men in you know, wrinkly black leathers anymore. Uh, Colour was introduced. Uh, we now have airbags in, 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 in leathers. And, you know, every year... One of the great things about the TT is innovation, uh, and and this scoreboard is an example. There are electric lights in it. That's an innovation. The lights on, yeah. No, um, you know, it has changed. We can see plywood. We can see perspex. We can see modern things from an archaeological perspective. In fact, too modern. That 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 netting didn't do it any favours. Did it? You know, from an archaeological perspective, yeah. this has had change over, over years, but. That's, a, a, I think, all part of the significance of, of the, uh, the TT to the Isle of Man. It has developed over years. The significance on day one was not the same as the significance on day you know, 365 yeah. or year 110 or whatever. So uh, we've been really taken, I think, the more we've looked at the TT as a heritage organisation, it's embedded itself in the history of the Isle of Man. The fact it's been controversial, there's the exhilaration, ecstasy of winning, the tragedy of, of, of death and destruction, uh, means there's a lot of passion. Uh, and, and that combination of uh, history, of emotion, passion, uh, as well as the, the documented evidence you know, that, that we've got machines from the past, we've got stories, we've got T-shirts uh, uh, and so on. It's continued to change and evolve over this you know, more than 100 years. And we decided a number of years ago that we'd start seriously collecting evidence for this history, whether it's bikes, beer mats or, or whatever. And in recent years we took a a difficult decision to remove from the Manx Museum an element of what people felt was hugely important history, uh, you know, folk life, uh, from you know, agriculture from the 1930s or the 1890s. And we, uh, we are replacing that with another element of Manx history, um, which is over the last 110 years. And we are well on, uh, well on target. We've acquired some very, very significant items which mark, again, innovation. You know, we have uh, incredibly generous donation from uh, Mugen Honda uh, of an electric bike, the first electric bike, and that deserves to be in a museum. And it could be in a museum in Tokyo uh, or wherever, but it's in the Isle of Man, which we think is the right place f- for it. And people, we have to see this in situ and in context? I think the context is, is important. What we're trying to talk about, as I say, is, is the passion, uh, the, the cultural identity, really, of what racing means to the Isle of Man. Uh, and in that context, this is iconic. It's recognisable. It's where everyone has their photograph taken. And so we'll be reconstructing an element of it, you know, the exact detail uh, to be determined, you know, I wouldn't want to put up some of the plywood bits, but I can see there's some tongue and groove timber which may be a bit older. Right. So, uh, so we already heard you're not going to strip back to what it was because it's, it's had so many reincarnations. This is it. It'll go in like this. I, I think it's it's slightly shabby. In fact, the more you have a look at, the more closer you get get the closer you get to it, the more you think actually, you know, this has had its day. Mm-hmm. It's it's a shame. It's sad. It's like anything. It's you know, exposed to the elements, um, and it functions on a few days a year. You know, we, we don't. You know, you don't have painters going back every week to touch to touch it up. It's you not know, that sort of thing, really. The weird thing is, in a hundred years' time or more, when people are watching this interview back, whatever replaces it will. The same controversy for some will be there about oh, don't touch things, leave it as it is. I think if the the more you consider um, innovation the more you have to then consider obsolescence and what is the lifespan. And I think it's it's interesting if you look at, uh, for example, the the Norton, the Manx Norton 
probably by the end of the 60s the design hadn't you know you know so that's a good example of something which was a uh, an innovative design but it had stayed reasonably static and the bare bones of a Max Norton probably stayed fairly similar but then the speed of innovation suddenly got faster and faster mm. and, and uh, we're now in the period of electronics where where things are you know obsolete within months sometimes mm. and i think that's that's a challenge for us. At what point does something go in a museum? And, w- and, and weirdly, with historic. the COVID thing, you could potentially have two years without the TT at this rate. Who knows? It's definitely been one, obviously. But uh, yeah. that could be the sort of resetting of the whole thing. I think the, it, it may be, uh, as, as wartime was, hmm. um, as foot to mouth was to an extent, uh, every time you've got a major event, whether it be a, a, a tragic accident or a technical, technological inv- innovation, you reset. Um, and my personal prediction for what it's worth the growth of electric bikes has been phenomenal and people have realised there is significant power in these bikes and the weight ratio is different it makes racing different it makes maintenance it makes the mechanics job different everything is different now because of um, this new form of traction so that will form probably a divide between the classic uh, uh, the smell of petrol will always be yeah. exhilarating to, yeah. to, to many of us uh, uh, and I remember being on the starting line just 50 metres away uh, from us uh, one of the early TT0 races and it was surreal yeah. this thing crept, no noise. <laughs> crept s- gently away yeah. but then it disappeared at a rate of knots that yeah. It was quite phenomenal, and, and you could sense that you know, this was a this was a change. And um, the the TT story is a story of change. Let's face it, because if you don't adapt and you don't change, you don't survive. But this comes under the, only in the Isle of Man. It comes under with all the other things we've kept longer than other places possibly. You know, this would have been taken out and digitised probably many moons ago elsewhere. But the Isle of Man has this thing of keeping things longer. Doesn't it? And, I, and I think that's that's also the combination of inertia and respect um, and I think that it is challenging uh, if we'd have taken this away 20 years ago um, it just would have gone in a skip now we're talking about significance, we're talking about the impact on cultural identity and um, because we, we're in the middle of developing a gallery this is at the right time to say how can we respect the history and we use different words. We, we talk about conserving. We, we're not as keen on preservation because sometimes preservation is condemning something to a slow death if it's not changing. But um, innovating, changing, developing allows you to keep things at an appropriate time in an appropriate context and give them a new life.